17 days of ingesting clean, even things out of it. That is, it can offset depression. A couple of notes about theanine. Theanine is something that is present in green tea, right? It's now been uh, created as a supplement. It's what's called a non-protein amino acid. So while there are amino acids and proteins, there are of course amino acids and non-proteins and theanine is one such non-protein amino acid. Theanine tends to stimulate the so-called glutamate and glutamine pathway. It's actually very similar to glutamate and glutamine. And it has a lot of effects on a lot of different aspects of the nervous system. But the general effect of theanine is to compete for the receptors for certain neurotransmitters. And the neurotransmitters I'm referring to are all excitatory neurotransmitters, things like glutamate, and they govern a tremendous amount of our daily thinking and action and feeling, et cetera, because they're present at so many connections between neurons in the brain. Theanine competes for the receptors for glutamate and tends to reduce our overall levels of alertness. So really when people take theanine along with caffeine, what they're doing is they're really uh, taking a slight, I don't want to call it depressant to the point where it misleads people and makes people think that it will make you depressed. The word is a little bit misleading, but it tends to reduce or blunt some of the more excitatory pro-alertness actions of neurons in the brain. So when you take it alongside caffeine, it tends to quote unquote, even things out a bit. I should mention that the dosages of theanine that are effective for offsetting the jitteriness of caffeine is 200 to 400 milligrams. And the studies that I was able to find showed that essentially up to 900 milligrams per day can be safe, but that's a very high dosage of theanine. In fact, so much so that it might increase sleepiness to the point where it wouldn't feel good. There are also some positive effects of daytime consumption of theanine that are independent of reducing the jitteriness of caffeine. For instance, there's a study demonstrating that 17 days of ingesting theanine at this 200 to 400 milligram dosage of at one to three times per day can reduce depression and anxiety. There are also some good data out there showing that theanine can have positive effects on endothelial cells, so blood vessels, capillaries, and so on, and increase some of the function of blood vessels, allowing them to pass more blood through them and give them a little bit more elasticity, if you will. So theanine has certain pro-sleep effects if it's taken prior to sleep. It can enhance the quality, depth, and duration of sleep. Again, if you're a sleepwalker or somebody who has extremely vivid dreams from which you wake up in the middle of the night, probably best to leave out theanine or maybe reduce the dosage down to 100 milligrams. And if that's still too much, then eliminate it completely. But theanine can be terrific for enhancing quality, depth, and duration of sleep. It can also reduce the jitteriness associated with caffeine-containing beverages and foods. And it has certain antidepressant and pro-endothelial effects. That is, it can offset depression, it can offset anxiety, although those are minor effects, okay, subtle effects. And it has been shown to improve endothelial cell, that is vessel and capillary function and structure in ways that can be beneficial for both brain and body. Now, one final point about theanine that's worth paying attention to is that the kinetics of theanine are such that you don't need to take theanine every time you ingest a caffeinated beverage. When we ingest caffeine, the peak effects of caffeine occur about 30 minutes after we drink it. And there I'm assuming one takes it all at once. And this is a key point that we'll come back to later, right? Rather than sipping your coffee slowly over a couple of hours or an hour, if you drink all 200 or 300 milligrams of caffeine in your coffee, 600 milligrams of your coffee, if you're getting one of those commercial coffees and you take theanine along with it, theanine will block some of the jitteriness and anxiety inducing effects of caffeine that can occur for much longer than the effects that caffeine lasts. So the peak in theanine occurs about an hour after ingestion. I suppose if you want to get really fancy and really dial in the kinetics, you could ingest theanine about a half hour before you ingest your caffeine. But I think that's getting a little bit uh, excessive in terms of controlling your microenvironment, if you will. I think it would be perfectly fine to take a 100 to 200 milligram capsule of theanine along with your coffee or tea and so forth. And just realize that if you drink more caffeine or you extend your caffeine intake over several hours, that you don't necessarily have to take theanine repeated times throughout the day.